Welcome, this is Ivan from the Cypress College Cyber Club and today I will be showing you guys how to enable a password prompt for administrative tasks. And what I mean by that is that by default if you make an account or at least the first account on the Windows machine it is automatically given administrative privilege. And what that means is that you can you have complete control over the computer. You can do you can run any task, you can change any setting without issue. Um, if you are a standard user, however, you are prompted to enter the password or the credentials for an administrative account. And what I'm doing here is I want to do the same for uh, administrative accounts as well because it adds an extra layer of security, right? So what I mean by that is Here's an example. If I want to open the command prompt and uh, I want to run it as administrator, by default, Windows will only ask you if you want to allow this app to make changes to your device, yes or no. Uh, how easy it is to just hit yes and then you have access, right? Um, so that's an issue. Um, it, for obvious reasons, you don't want to make it that easy to run administrative tasks. So what you can do is you can actually um, have the computer or have Windows prompt you with a password or to at least enter the credentials for that account even if you're already logged in as an administrator as an extra you know safety mechanism and um, there's two ways to do this in Windows 10 um, and it depends entirely on which edition of Windows you have so if you have Windows 10 home uh, we're just going to be a whole different uh, way of doing this which I'll go in over part two if you're on Windows 10 Pro, then we have access to some tools that Windows 10 Home users don't. And one of those tools is the uh, local group policy editor. So if you're on Windows 10 Pro Home, or sorry, Windows 10 Pro, uh, I'm going to show you right now how to do that. So what you want to do is type in uh, GP Edit in the search. And that's going to bring up Edit Group Policy. Go ahead and click that and that will bring up the editor. So what you want to do is click on Windows Settings, then hit Security Settings. Next you want to click on Local Policies, Security Options, and then you'll see a list of uh, different settings that you can configure relating to security. And uh, what you want to be concerned with is the, uh, the bottom where you'll see User Account Control and specifically I'm talking about the third line. So these two lines right here um, deal with the uh, the prompt where you gotta hit yes or no or enter the password for an administrator. And this specific line right here deals with standard users. And as you can see it already prompts for credentials if you're a standard user, which is what we want. Now what we want is to do the same thing if you are an admin. And so what you can do is you can uh, click this line right here, double click it, and you can change the uh, prompt right here. And what you want to do is select prompt for credentials. Hit apply, and that's it. So now uh, when I will, whenever you try to run administrative tasks, you'll be forced into the password every time. And it's just a good safety measure. In my case, I am using a PIN, so all I have to do is type in my PIN versus a password. But it's still the same thing, right? It's extra layer of security. Uh, another example is uh, changing um, network settings, right? So let's say I go to network and internet, change adapter options, and then uh, let's say I want to change my IPv4 configuration. Well, now I'm going to need the PIN. I can't just go in and change those settings. So those are the benefits to changing that. All right, so if you're a Windows 10 user, things are be a little uh, different. So if you are a Windows 10 home user, uh, there is still a way to enable the password prompt even if you don't have access to the local group policy editor. So what you can do is you can actually open the uh, registry editor which is uh, open by typing in reg edit that types in a registry editor 
Uh, go ahead and run as administrator. And it'll come up. So what you want to do, and essentially we're doing the exact same thing that I did earlier, but through the registry because uh, you don't have the fancy you know, GUI to do it the easy way. So yours is going to be a little more complicated, but essentially we're doing the exact same thing. So what you want to do is click on uh, H key local machine, or at least expand it. Then you want to click on software, or expand it anyway. And then you're going to scroll down and find Microsoft, expand that. And then you're going to have to find Windows. So you're going to go down to W. And there it is. You're going to expand that. You're going to find the current version, which is right here. You're going to go ahead and scroll down to Policies. That's right here. And then lastly, you're going to find System, which is at the bottom. So what this does is it's going to essentially bring up the exact same um, settings, but through the registry that we talked about earlier. And what we want to do is we're going to mess with a consent prompt behavior user. And that would be this one here. You're going to double click it. And mine's already set to three. And what three means is it is equal to uh, requiring credentials on uh, uh, administrative tasks. And so you, if yours might do, your might, yours might be different. But what you want to do is you want to change it to three, and then hit OK. And then you're going to find the first one, which is uh, consent prompt behavior admin. And you're going to make sure this one's a three as well. You're going to hit OK. And that's going to force you to enter a password whenever you want to run an administrative uh, task. And so obviously mine's already at 3, so if I type in CMD, run as administrator, uh, it'll ask for my uh, my PIN. In your case, it might be a password. It doesn't matter. Um, it just depends how you have it set up. And if you put it in, then it'll let you through. So I um, hope that you found this tutorial helpful. It definitely beats making a whole separate account as a standard user and then keeping the separate one for uh, administrative purposes. I just like to have one account and uh, you know just have that easier access you know it's, it helps a lot especially if you have uh, you know driver updates uh, if you want to deal with uh, you know startup items stuff like that it's just good to have everything in one account so um, have fun with it and then uh, see you in the next video